I am Admiral Liu Xiang Wei, Commander of China's Naval Forces. My journey to this position of authority has been shaped by tragedy, a tale woven with threads of loss and longing. My father and my elder brother were both taken from us by the hands of Japanese aggression during the Sino-Japanese War. Their deaths left wounds that run deep, scars etched upon my soul, driving me with a singular purpose, revenge. It is a purpose that beats within my heart like a drum, echoing the cries of the fallen and fueling my determination to see justice served. With the Emperor's blessing, I now stand at the helm of our Navy, a position of great responsibility and even greater opportunity. For too long, Japan has flaunted its power, disrespecting our sovereignty and trampling upon our dignity. But no more. My mission is clear, to humble the Japanese Empire, to remind them of the cost of their actions, and to ensure that the blood of my kin was not shed in vain. This is not merely a quest for vengeance, it is a quest for justice, a quest to right the wrongs of the past and secure a better future for our people. Make no mistake, this will not be an easy task. The Japanese are formidable foes, skilled in the arts of war and well-versed in the ways of deception. Yet, we shall not falter, for we fight not only for ourselves but for the memory of those who came before us, whose sacrifices paved the way for our righteous cause. So let this log serve as a testament to our resolve, a beacon of hope in the darkness of uncertainty. Japan, we are coming for you, and we will not rest until justice is served and our honor restored. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to a new campaign. This is not just going to be any campaign, because for the first time, I'm running a mod. I'm running Brother Monroe's Dreadnoughts Improvement Project. In case you haven't heard of this mod, it changes quite a bit of the vanilla behavior. Starting with some of the campaign changes, there are no submarines. There are also no mines, although they are, as according to the notes, possibly going to appear later into the campaign. Naval invasions are easier. Allies are more likely to buy your multiple ships. Peace agreements follows what the player selects, as opposed to, let's say, having the government slash AI just overrule you and go, nope, sorry, not happening. Uh, blockades and transport losses, much more significant, and it can even cause a revolution or the collapse of a nation. Tech research is much more even. Um, that's just the campaign stats. There's shipbuilding changes, armor tech changes, the gun stats have been reworked, torpedoes down to about four times the damage. Uh, Anti-torpedo blisters have been improved, and in case you're wondering, can I keep my battleship or heavy cruiser or battlecruiser safe using sonar or hydrophones? Uh, no, because they can't wear them anymore. As for the battles themselves, the damage from partial pens has been reduced, over pens are less likely, fire chance has been reduced. You can see the ships from farther away, but battle ranges um, thereby are generally longer than vanilla. And, thankfully, the AI is no longer clairvoyant about torpedoes. So you might actually be able to land a torpedo hit on an enemy ship. That is the changes that I'm working with. That's some of them. If you want to have a look at the mod yourself, linked down below in the description. That's where you can find it. As for this campaign, I have one singular objective. Eliminate Japan. My admiral has been gravely wounded in the war. His father and brother were killed. And it is now up to him to not only reclaim Chinese honor, but also get some revenge upon the Japanese. In order to do that, we're going to have to either completely collapse the Empire of Japan or take it over entirely. Such are our objectives. Now, this first objective, or this first part of the video, I'm going to have a look at some of the ships that the AI has generated for me, as well as try and get acquainted somewhat with the changes that Brother Monroe has made with his mod. For starters, by the way, um, if you're looking at this thing top left-hand side of the map, you're going, what is that? Um, that has been introduced as part of the 1.5.0 patch. It's not something that the mod adds. 
second part, um, these different map colors, if you look and see all these different colors on the map, normally it looks like this. And time and time again, I'm getting comments, how do you do that? Click on the scroll, highlight borders. And all of a sudden, everybody has their own neat little border. Now, let's have a look. What is the situation of China at the moment? Um, nobody is at war. Nobody is aggressive. There are some minus fives and some minus, or even a plus five with Spain. But beyond that, nothing special. I have 49 ships, which I'll introduce in a minute. I'm apparently building another 13. We have four battleships, two battlecruisers, seven heavies, nine lights, and 27 DDs. No torpedo boats. Um, power rating, 72%. 281,000 tons total. My army logistics is uh, much like my Russian campaign, fairly awful, but this time around, Russia actually makes it look good, 75%. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I guess I'm not going to really have to rely on my army, which kind of did me in last time around. Also, the fact that I have, um, well, like a very small army for the amount of population that I have, it kind of surprises me. But we'll just have to manage with the army that we're given. Okay, um, anybody really at grave risk of going to war? Well, Austria-Hungary with these, uh, the British and the French, not that happy. We got Germany and France looking at the brink. And the British, British again, Austria-Hungary. Yeah, it's not, not great in Europe, but for me, it seems fine. Now, some of the values that Brother Monroe has also changed are the ones that you can see in the campaign here. These are the changes that you get from having a particular type of government. I have an absolute monarchy. This means that I get 20% more naval budget or my GDP growth is reduced. It's not great. Military power plus 13%. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Like, is my military stronger? Um, because I'm not really seeing it. Unrest is more likely to happen. Fun. Now, my enemy, the Empire of Japan. They have 34 ships, so I outnumber them with ships, but that doesn't actually say much because I don't know what the quality of their ships is. I don't know what the quality of my ships is. And the fact that they have 22 CLs, well, that could be a perfect counter my 27 DDs. Their GDP is about 50% bigger than mine. Um, our growth is similar. We have oil production, but they do not. Um, again, it just says it boosts the economy in various ways. Um, yeah. If we could get more of a tooltip saying this exactly is how that impacts you, that'd be fantastic. Because right now it just says, hey, you have this. Cool. But I don't know what it does. They are pretty favorable towards British. That could be a problem because if they do link up with the British, I am in trouble. As for the rest, not that special. Um, I'm mostly concerned about the British. If they manage to go to a relationship with the British, like an alliance... Well, that's not really something I am prepared for. Because if the British start interfering in my conflict with the Japanese, then I'm going to have a lot more trouble on my hands. These guys are 34 ships. Uh, the British most likely... Oh, they don't have that many. They got 31. But they're building 49. For no apparent reason. Alright, let's have a look at the finances. We are actually getting a pretty decent shipbuilding cap. I'm going to start building out my shipyards right away, because that generally takes a while. Um, let's improve shipping cap and let's not immediately go over the budget too much there. We'll just go to 0.25. I don't mind burning through a bit of money. Crew training, not that big of a priority right now because I'm not at war with anybody. Uh, tech budget, 70% should be fine. Let's have a look at the research. I have, ooh, rangefinder is going to take a while, 71 months. That's a, that's a fairly long time. Big guns, we got Mark 3s mostly. We're working on the Mark 3 for the 13 inches. Small guns, we're getting Mark 3s all the way up to 8 inch. And we're getting Mark 4 for the 3 inches. Okay. Uh, torpedoes, oh, sorry, submarines. Like it says, submarines are there, but you can see that the other two blocks that you normally have over here are no longer present. So you don't get submarines. And this makes me happy. Uh, you do get mines, but. Like, there's a... <laughs> so that's how he did it. Um, he just removed the maximum minefield size. Or the maximum minefield size is now zero. So this means there cannot be any mines, if I'm reading this correctly. That's nice. I really like that. 
Okay, let's have a look at the ships. What do we have? We have a couple of different designs. Um, here's the fleet. And I'm going to take a minute to rename these ships to patrons and YouTube members. So if you want to get your own ship in the game or if you want to get your own uh, name in the video series, you can support me on Patreon, support me on YouTube, up to you at the rank of NCO or greater. I can really use your support as YouTube is not favorable to me right now. Um, it is <laughs> really going downhill fast and I need your support. So if you have a couple bucks to spare, then please consider becoming either a patron or a YouTube member. All ships are renamed after patrons and YouTube members now. All right, let's have a look at some of the ship designs, starting with the DD. I'm very curious to see how these changes are going to affect battles, how these changes are going to affect the way that the ships handle. Let's see. Survivability, always key. Oh, cramped quarters. <laughs> okay, that's not a great start. 33 and a half knots, pretty fast boat. Um, decent range. I don't need a ton of range to get to Japan. And deliver some torpedoes. Standard bulkheads, potential problem. Beam and draft supposedly doesn't change that much anymore. Yeah, like a percentage, like a half a percent. I'm not that impressed with that, so no big changes there. Um, crowd quarters could mean that the crew is going to start dying very quickly. But then again, it is a DD. It is that not that likely to survive for a very long period of time. That is, depending on how you use the ship to fight. Firepower. Three four and a half inch guns, a couple of torpedo launchers, and these guys only get one launch. Reduced ammo for the torpedoes. Their capabilities are about seven kilometer range. They do 14,000 damage. Well, he did say that the damage was quadrupled, so it means the torpedoes are extremely dangerous at this point. The guns themselves, not that dangerous. AP and HE, fairly aligned. So you're able <laughs> to maybe set a fire or do some kind of HE damage against a target you can't pen. But then again, it is a DD. It's a 4.5 inch gun. I shouldn't be expecting any miracles. The fact that this thing is firing light shells, of course, doesn't really do it any favors either. As for the rest, um, 0.6 inches of armor all around. Pitch and roll, not that bad. Actually, a very balanced ship for an auto-designed ship. This 0.4%. Very good engine deficiency. The rest of it, yeah. I'd say it's an okay ship. Pretty <laughs> pretty surprising, really. Light cruiser, the Kidong class. What do we get here? We get one 7-inch gun on the back. It's an interesting position for a 7-incher to be. It's the biggest gun on the ship. Uh, the others are 4.3s on the bow. Okay. It's not great. It doesn't mean that this ship could be chasing a destroyer. I guess, being able to deal damage with these guns against the destroyer. It also comes equipped with actually a very minor armament of a couple of 3.4 inch casemates, as well as four underwater torpedo launchers, 18 inchers, six and a half kilometer range. The ship feels undergunned, very undergunned. Now, I'm again very impressed with the four wet offset, only 0.6. Pitch and roll are very good. Now Monroe did mention that he changed this in the mod. So your ships are not going to have as much of a, a fore or aft weight offset, and pitch and roll should not be as bad as they normally are. Mini bulkheads, 28 knots, you can keep up with the DDs. Range is a bit low. Not sure if that's a good idea. Uh, spacious quarters, mini bulkheads, at least it has some survivability on it. As for type of ammo, picric acid is fine, although it does have some flash fire problems. You get a 22% chance for a flash fire, that's not great. Stereoscopic rangefinder, it has advanced radio telegraph. Armor-wise, look at that, 3.1 all over. That's pretty good. That is pretty good, I can work with that. Okay, I quite like this ship. Heavy cruiser, Jay Young, wow. Okay, um, not fast, 20.9 knots. The ship has very serious protection, maximum bulkheads. It has um, Crip 1, it has a single hull bottom, a Citadel 1, I'm not even sure if I have a better Citadel than that. We get oh, we get a modicum of armor, heavy main belt, fore belt and aft belt are okay, but not great. Main deck, fore deck and aft deck are somehow more heavily armored than the main deck, which considering the layout of this ship I don't really agree with, because there is not that much that can be damaged on the, the, the bow and stern. 
but okay. Superstructure, okay, armor. Now, let's have a look at these guns. What sort of firepower are you getting? You're getting two 10.1 inchers. Okay, good range. Whether they'll hit anything at that range remains to be seen. We're looking at a reload of about half a minute. Uh, secondary guns are these 8 inchers. Far better reload, far less range, as can be expected. Well, not that much less range. They're both Mark 3s. Okay, pen on these is pretty good. But I think I'm not exactly painting a fair picture here. Because we're getting about 100% like armor quality at this point. So that means that these guns can actually punch way better. Yeah. They can do quite a bit of damage, which is nice. They carry seven underwater torpedo launchers, short range, and that can hit very hard. That is very dangerous. If these things are able to land like two torpedoes out of a salvo of three, and you actually have two of them going off as well, that can inflict some serious damage. Against destroyers, we're armed with a couple of two-inchers, as well as one single four-incher that seemed to be in a fairly odd position. But I guess the ship still had some room. Okay, coincidence range finding, it definitely means the ship is more of a close-in warrior. The problem that I see is getting to that range, because 20.9 knots is not fast. Battlecruiser, the Tangshan. What, triple barrels on the sides? Huh. Interesting. She's doing 25 knots, good range, many bulkheads, uh, fairly high draft, which is probably impacting the operational range a good bit. She has double hull bottom. Interesting. She is apparently also sporting torpedoes. We'll get to that in a minute. 15 inch main belt. Wow. That's a hefty belt. I wonder if that can get pinned. Four belt, pretty good. Aft belt, less good. Superstructure, well armored. Main deck, four deck, uh, aft deck. They're all good. If this is something that the mod influences or the 15 point uh, or 1.50 gameplay, I'm not sure. But this ship seems fairly well balanced. As for, well, he changed quite a bit as to length. He not being Brother Monroe, but the ship designer itself. But it, like it's a couple percentage, it doesn't matter that much. What I'm very curious about is how well do these guns actually do? It seems like a logistical nightmare, the amount of guns that this thing has, the amount of different, different calibers. We're getting 13.3 inch side mounts. Um, very good pen. Very good pen. But as you can see, this ship ha itself has 15.1 inch armor belt, which means that in order to pen itself, this thing is going to have to close to about a thousand meter range. At which point, you'll probably be starting to uh, get a, a healthy breakfast of torpedoes shoved up your ass. So that is something that this battlecruiser probably will not <laughs> eagerly experience. Um, again, your battlecruisers, heavy cruisers, battleships do not get a hydrophone. So if you want to have those in your fleet, escort your ships. We also got these dual barrels. It's the same gun. A couple of 8-inchers to deal with the cruisers. A 6-incher that's ooh, it's a pretty, pretty bad position. This turret slightly farther forward on a barbette, and this thing over there made more sense. We're getting a couple of 4-inch guns. We're getting some 3.4s. We're getting some 2.2s as casemates in the main superstructure. We're getting one on the back. Again, shift these around. It would have made more sense. We're getting two underwater torpedo launchers. Bow and stern. 19 inch fast launchers, which pack a punch. I quite like this ship. I have high hopes for these battle cruisers. And then, the main course, the battleship. Uh, yeah, it displaces less tonnage than my battle cruiser. It feels small. It also feels like the turrets are half falling off the ship, which is because they are. Many bulkheads, 21 knots, so not particularly quick, but still fast enough. I can make that work. Spacious crew quarters, excellent. Means that the crew, if it dies, well, it dies. Interesting about this ship is that it has no bow turret, so you're going to have to go broadside and use all of these side mounts, which means I can fire six barrels. Yeah, it's not great, it's not terrible. Harvey armor, ooh. That's pretty old. Maybe we need to refit the ship immediately. Because losing a battleship can be very painful. 
So let's switch this to Krupp 1. Um, let's switch this to maximum bulkheads. But the ship is overweight if I do that. What else can I change? How about these guns? These guns actually pack less punch because they're 12 inches, but they are Mark 3. Considering that this is the battleship, I want to have these guys be able to punch very hard. So that's going to be their type of ammo. Um, flash fire chance is 75%. Holy shit. They're more likely to blow themselves up than blow the enemy up at this point. 65. 38. 23. Like it's not a... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a safe value, but it is better than what we had. I will keep the layout of the ship the same so as not to interfere with the refit time too much. We're firing capped ballistic HE shells, which are capable of penning quite a lot of armor and could make life on destroyers and light cruisers very short. Torpedo launchers, I'm seeing one under the port and starboard, but not the bow and the stern, which is fine. It means that if you're chasing a ship, you might... Yeah, if you're chasing a ship and going broadside, you might be able to lob a torpedo at it. Um, propulsion, I can make these fast, but I don't want to. And I don't have the tonnage available to do that. Okay. Oh, boy. Are we going to have to have a chat about the armor? It's a glass cannon, this one. <clears throat> Fore belt, one inch. Aft belt, less than an inch. Yeah, we're going to have to have a serious chat about this armor. Reduce the range. And put all that stuff into armor. Like make this 3 inch. Make the aft belt at least 3 inch. Make the main belt like 15 inches. Uh, superstructure 3 inch. Maybe turn this to 14. Main deck. Why is the aft deck so big? 4 aft and main. We put 4 inches on the main deck. Okay, maybe not 4. Can't quite hold that. There, 3.4. As for the rest, it's okay. Armor on the turret should be sufficient for a while. The 4.9 inch turret top armor might be a problem, but at these ranges, I'm not that likely to see plunging fire. So I should not really be taking a whole lot of turret roof hits, at least not the ones that pen you. Okay. Best rangefinder. Uh, best loader, best turret rotation, that's fine. Double hull bottom should keep her alive for a while. Citadel 2 is fine, anti-flood 2 is fine. Reinforced bulkheads haven't been invented yet. I only have semi-oil. Engine efficiency is very good. Yeah, the ship is kind of perfectly maxed out at this point. So let's save the design and put a couple of our battleships through the refit. Because at this rate... I don't really want to send these out into a fight if I don't absolutely have to. The way that these ships are currently laid out with that low armor, um, it means that if they do go broadside, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. So we're going to refit these things. It's going to cost me a million a month for two months. That's fine. A million is pocket change at this point. Although, <laughs> I'm kind of going over my shipbuilding capacity there. Because what are we building? What are we building? Uh, status here, building. <clears throat> we are building... These are the ships that I have not yet renamed. We're building a couple of heavy cruisers, a battle cruiser, a battleship. Right. Right. Now, I already have a lot of DDs. I have, what, 22, I believe. So I'm not really that interested in getting a whole lot more destroyers out there. So any additional destroyers that I'm building, I'm going to cancel those. Whoops, I think I just scrapped an active ship. Scrap, scrap, scrap. Um, light cruisers, I have quite a few. I don't want to build additional light cruisers, not yet. I'm perfectly happy with the size of the Navy right now. I would like more heavy cruisers, so we're going to continue building these. We're building a new battle cruiser and one more battleship. That battleship seems to have just started construction. It's going to take 16 months. If I'm going to build one right from the start, it's going to take me 16 months. Um, no. Scrap that. 
That does clear up some shipbuilding capability, but I need to save like a little bit. So this ship suspend. And now we should be fine there. Now we're under budget. Uh, we're getting a little bit of money coming in, so I can pour that into research. And I can put that into shipbuilding capacity for transport. Okay. It is nice not being able to build submarines, nor having to worry about them, because those things are annoying. And I believe that Brother Monroe has made an excellent choice not having these in the game. All right. That's going to be it for this first episode. Meet the fleet, meet the Admiral, and soon we're going to have to do a bit of combat. I might start to antagonize the Japanese a bit, uh, start training some crews, and maybe get a first bit of battle in. I would love to take off some of the colonies first. These guys are helping the Japanese effort. Um, my ability to invade them is awful, so that's not going to happen. But I might be able to blockade the Empire of Japan to some effect. And by doing that, maybe cause them some economic grief. We still see how it goes. Hope you guys are excited about the new campaign. I am. I want to see how this new mod is going to change everything. And I hope you will join me for the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for more.